Most people have heard of fasting. However, despite it being a simple and age-old concept, there is plenty of confusion surrounding the details, such as when it should be done, for how long, and what exactly can be consumed during a fast. There are numerous protocols that can be found all over the internet, some of which are probably more complicated than they need to be. The good news is that fasting is not so much about specific protocols, but more about general principles that can then be applied to a variety of situations. Additionally, fasting is not just about inducing a physiological response to aid the body's eliminative processes. It is also a time for reflection and appreciation. The most successful fasts not only bring the body through the healing crisis, but can also improve psychological and spiritual states. So keep watching to learn about one of the oldest and most powerful cures known. Food is such an integral part of our history and being. It provides the building blocks for our bodies, the fuel to run it, and the medicine to heal us. For obvious reasons, famine is one of the most feared situations that humanity has to face. However, in the developed world, food shortages are not something that has been known for several generations. In fact, even in the developing world, food shortages are increasingly rare and are generally the result of deliberate political interventions. The earth itself has ample capacity to keep everyone fed, although corruption of the food supply has ruined the quality of the products in a lot of places. In many countries, such as the United States, the United Kingdom, and here in New Zealand, obesity rates have continued to climb, and the problem is now endemic. Not only does this result in all sorts of health problems, but has no doubt made the thought and prospect of fasting even more difficult for many people. In this day and age, a fast to some is skipping the banana chocolate chip muffin in that four hour window between breakfast and lunch. Our bodies, however, are well equipped to fast and do much better on less food than most people think. It has been known for a long time that one way to shorten your pet's lifespan is to give it lots of food. Despite this, many people kill their pets and themselves with too much food. It is not helped by the fact that mainstream medicine often has a negative view of fasting. When I was a medical student, a surgeon who was lecturing us said that the gut taking a break was a load of nonsense. As far as he was concerned, the gut could process food around the clock every day of your life. He claimed there were only a couple of reasons to stop eating, and they related to having surgery or some specific conditions such as acute pancreatitis. However, this mistakes what the gut is capable of doing without consideration of the wider health implications of continuous loading of the system. Indeed, fasting has been a health practice discovered by numerous cultures across history, and more than just a health practice, it is a spiritual practice that is mentioned in scripture. We find that after Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, the devil came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Matthew 4, 3, 4. The passage contains far more wisdom than a casual interpretation can reveal. In fact, it contains everything we need to know about fasting. Blinded by reductionism and looking at the human body like a machine, allopathic medicine has ignored such wisdom, which is why fasting does not usually feature in its repertoire. It is certainly not looked upon as a powerful curative practice. But fasting is more than just eating less in order to induce physiological responses to aid the body's healing. On that lower level, even animals have the sense to fast when they are unwell with certain conditions. As Uruk Williams said with regard to the part played by fasting, it is a further remarkable commentary upon human intelligence that with all his boasted wisdom, man should be the only animal that hasn't enough sense to stop eating when he is sick. And remember the animals. They know what to do, but animals follow their instinct 
while man's instinct is betrayed by misaligned reason, which deludes him into the belief that nature's healing crises are the work of truculent microbes. Fasting also concerns bringing oneself back into right thinking with an appreciation of the body we have been gifted and reflection on the wrong patterns that led to our dis-ease. Indeed, after his 40-day fast, Jesus also declared, For it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Matthew 4.10 The least religious among us may prefer to think in terms of what could be referred to as the laws of nature. There are many trespasses we can make against these laws. Sometimes our wrong thinking can induce emotions and hormonal changes with subsequent physiological responses that manifest as physical illness. Poor eating habits can lead to not only excessive calories and cumulative toxicities, but also to deficiencies, and the latter may also need addressing during fasting. Environmental toxins might be invisible, whether it's herbicides in food, aluminium in vaccines, or fluoride in water. Unconscious behaviour by those accepting these products will not be excused by nature, and they will pay the consequences. Redemption comes from shifting the faith away from so-called public health experts, drug-dealing doctors, and their various puppet masters, back to where it belongs. Those who attempt to put God to the test are on a hiding to nothing. When a state of dis-ease is brought about, it is nature's wake-up call that you are asleep at the wheel. While it is tempting to blame germs or genes or something else, that kind of thinking won't correct anything and will interfere with true healing. Nature found you guilty of the crime, now you have to serve the time. And in many cases, this is where fasting is a way to not only clean your body, but also to clean up your thinking. And if it's a child that is sick, then as parents, we must accept that our neglect, in whatever form it was, played the crucial role. The fools project, while the faithful reflect and accept. Alright, now that we've established some background to fasting, and why it is much more than mindlessly restricting food intake, it's time to move on to how it can be done. The first major differentiation is between acute illness, where the fasting is usually relatively straightforward, and chronic illness, where the fasting may need to be more prolonged and have other supplementation considerations. An acute illness is one that comes on quickly and typically affects you when you have otherwise been well. Examples are influenza and head colds. In these cases, complete avoidance of food is indicated. Drinks are simple, but can be given copiously, either pure water or weak citrus drinks. Our family favours the latter, and we use the juice of one lemon, freshly squeezed into a very large glass of water. If citrus is not available, then diluted organic apple juice is another option. For example, one part apple juice to four parts water. The only situation where food and drinks should be avoided completely is abdominal emergencies. The fasting period for acute illnesses is often short and it may only require 24 to 48 hours. If there is sweating, it should be encouraged. Your body is using the skin as an elimination route. Give it a hand by taking a hot bath, warm up the area of concern with a hottie, or get in the sauna. Make sure that you replace the fluid losses with adequate drinks. To find out more about the role of fever in healing crises and the best ways to manage it, you can also watch my video, The Truth About Fever. Chronic illnesses are generally more complicated and the fasting may need to be more specifically tailored to the case. Each person comes with a background story which led them to their current condition and this needs to be taken into account in order to correct what has gone wrong. With regard to the period of fasting required for more advanced illness, Dr. Ulrich Williams reported that in his decades of practice, the longest fasts personally supervised are in a child of 10 months, 14 days, in a child of 18 months, 19 days, in a man of 67 years, 63 days. Three other people have fasted over 40 days, and two or more between 30 and 40 days. Fasts of over 20 days even are rare. The usual duration of a fast, either an acute or chronic disorder, is from one or a few to occasionally 14 days. 
Thankfully, in the vast majority of cases, the eliminative phase will be completed fairly quickly, and for many people, even a one or two week period of fasting will take care of situations that were previously declared hopeless. However, it is difficult to predict in advance what period of fasting will be required. You just have to do what it takes until the body completes its clean out. And if the bowels are still sluggish during this period, then daily enemas will be required to get things moving. Chronic illnesses may also be accompanied by nutritional deficiencies. So in these circumstances, diluted citrus or grapefruit juice is advisable rather than plain water. Ulrich Williams advised supplementing with vegetable water and seaweed powder as well. This combination is fine, especially for vegetarians. However, instead of this, we often suggest supplementing with a daily bone broth, particularly if it has been prepared with garlic, onions, carrots and herbs. Also, vitamin B compounds should be taken. Here in Australasia, we can add yeast extract in the form of Marmite or Vegemite to our bone broth or vegetable water. If you can't source something like this, then a daily vitamin B complex supplement from a trusted supplier could be taken. And finally, don't be afraid to take a daily tablespoon of pure olive oil, one of nature's finest medicines. These are the general principles for fasting, but as I have emphasized, each case is different and there are no rigid protocols. Once you understand the fundamental elements of the role of fasting and how to aid the body's elimination, you should be able to elucidate what works for your particular situation. If the fasting period was only for a few days or less, then a normal diet can be recommenced with simply lesser amounts at first. On the other hand, if the fast was for a longer period, eating should be restarted with a light fruit diet at first. As a rule of thumb, if the fast was for a week or so, then the fruit diet is only required for a day. If the fast was for two weeks, then the fruit diet is employed for three days. However, it is not a time to eat baskets of fruit, and each meal during this period should consist of just one fruit at a time. For example, grapefruit at breakfast, mangoes for lunch and strawberries for dinner. At the end of the fruit diet phase, then complete a week with a light diet. This includes three meals a day consisting of some vegetables, both cooked and raw, salad, eggs, and perhaps a little cooked fruit with cream or custard. And of course, at least a daily glass of a diluted citrus drink. When you start back on your quote, normal diet, it is vital to make sure that it is as healthy as you can make it, because wrong eating habits may have been the reason you became unwell in the first place. The best diet includes a pure water source and food products that are not laced with unwelcome chemicals. Fruit and vegetables should be obtained freshly. Wholemeal flour and raw sugars should be used in place of their refined and bleached counterparts. Milk should be raw rather than ruined by pasteurization and sourced from a local farm that you trust. For us meat eaters, we should be aware of how the animals were raised and handled. I hope that this video has given you an overview of fasting. As suggested, it is not about specific protocols or a one-size-fits-all approach. It is about learning the principles which involve not only the body's response at a physiological level, but also the equally important psychological and spiritual elements. The idea is to take yourself to a higher plane in multiple ways, not only healing your body and gaining new insights into the practices of health, but also your connection to the life force. If you want to know more about fasting, then keep the questions coming in. There is also our book, Terrain Therapy, which contains extensive information about different kinds of diets that may be required for specific conditions. There are also hundreds of recipes and simply by browsing through them, one can garner a wealth of information about how food should be prepared. Overall, the idea of the book is to equip the reader with the knowledge required to practice good health rather than fight disease. With this approach, periods of illness become less frequent and can even disappear. 
I once was a doctor in the system, but came to the realization that drugs and surgery are generally tools of physiological suppression and symptom control. Our bodies are remarkable gifts and their capacity to self-heal far exceeds any of the technological terrors that have been unleashed on humanity in the past century. And fasting is one of our most powerful techniques. In most cases, it does not require anything more than a general understanding of the principles discussed in this video and the resolute faith that all will be well. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father, who is unseen, and your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Matthew 6, 16-18 If you enjoyed this video, please visit support.drsam.com 